Welcome to the Teach Bigger Podcast. I'm Chris Mosley. I'm here with Chris Pratt and Tyler Lamont. Mm-hmm. How's it going, guys? It's, it's going good. as well as it can go. Well, good. Good to see you. Good to hear from you. Good to be um, online once again. Well, you know what uh, they say. It's good to be seen. And not viewed. Viewed. I'm glad That's you're right. listening, listening to me. It's yes. good. Well, yeah, so, you know, we chit-chat uh, a lot. Um, we chit and then we chat. <laughs> Mostly chit, but... Yeah, then we all chat. You know, and so uh, right now, you know, in this current state of events, it's a, we all agree that we're like in a pivotal moment in education. And so it just kind of led us to reflect a bit um, because since we're not moving out and about, you, you have a lot of time to reflect. Uh, just kind of, <laughs> just on kind of some of uh, the pivotal moments like in our teaching careers, because I think you know, in our journey as we get further along and more experience, we'll look back on this moment and this will be a pivotal moment. So we're just kind of linking those uh, together. So um, we're just gonna kind of just share, you know, and maybe you can um, see what you connect with if you had these experiences, or maybe we'll hear from you uh, down the line of some of those pivotal moments in your career. Let's start with, um, this, you know what, Pratt, let's start with you because you've been teaching, what is it, like 70, 80 years now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. No, long I, enough for to lose the hair twice. Right. This is my <laughs> this is my sixteenth year in education. So in education. But you know, it's funny because as you were saying that, like we were thinking about like your first year of teaching, and I was kind of thinking like, wow, what if this was your first year teaching? And I'm sure there are people listening right now that this is your I first know. year teaching. And so if it I, is, you should definitely email us and we might try to see if we can have you on the show. Yeah, we need to, we need to like have, you know, stories from a first year uh, COVID-19 teacher. Yeah, we teacher should, I know. So, yeah, but yeah, so I just find that very interesting or, or maybe this is your last year teaching. What a way to go out. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, so okay, so what about it? My first year, what do you want? So I don't, okay, so tell us some just some things from it. So I know you probably blocked it out because it was back <laughs> in the 60s, but if you could tell us just some of the things that I guess made an uh, impact on you and, and you go in a certain direction, because I think everyone goes into their first year teaching like, I'm gonna be this type of teacher, and then something mm-hmm. happens in your first year teaching, like, no, you're not, you need to be this type of way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so do you remember any of those things? I know I do. Well, okay, so let's see. You know, I was in music and I was a band director. And so my first year of teaching, I definitely had this major misconception because up until that point, like I had done student teaching and up until that point, like I had done what like private instruction, like private lessons. So I would go to a school, like while I was in college, I would go to a school, um, you know, one day a week after school and I would tutor kids privately. So, you know, um, you know, it was generally the, the better kids. And so they would come in and I'd make them really good. You know, I teach them how to play and they go to competitions and win and, and things were great. And I guess I just, not that I ever thought about it, but I just kind of was in that flow that this is what it's going to be like with more kids. And so I had this perfect picture that all the children want to come to school and learn like these kids that came to my <laughs> that came to my private lesson yeah. sessions. And so I just assumed everyone was going to come in, sit down and be quiet and we would do music or whatever it is we do. And um, mm-hmm. I remember on the first day, we were on an eight period day at this school. And by the time I got to seventh period, I realized things were not going to be the way I had planned. I... I walked, I, or my kids came into to the beginner trombone class, and um, we used to always kid because, like, if there were missing links, they were all in that class. Like, <laughs> they, they were the island of misfit toys, <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yes, like first of all, I, I think I had somewhere in the neighborhood of like 23 kids in there, which to a normal Jesus classroom Christ. teacher, you might be like, yeah, I have like 32. Nothing. But when you're dealing with weapons of mass destruction, like trombones, this is mm-hmm. a lot of children, okay? And so, you know, there were a lot of them in there and they were all boys. So I had a class of all like 20 something sixth grade boys. In the afternoon. In the afternoon, 
well after, after PE lunch. and after recess after and lunch all of and it. lunch and lunch right. and, and so they're smelling the ripe and feeling good and and i knew something was wrong when because <laughs> i was we had a three-person staff so there were three band directors at this school and so i was obviously the newbie and the other two were kind of my mentors and we all had a really great working relationship and i remember they both were staring in my classroom window like while I was teaching and like just laughing because they knew what was going to happen. <laughs> and I'm going like, what is the big deal, you know? And that ended up being the reason I was going to quit my first year of teaching. Um, it was a rough, rough year because I just didn't know how to handle really any sure students, know. but I sure didn't know how to handle sixth grade boys. That was just, I mean, mm -hmm. I was a sixth grade boy, but I wasn't that kind of sixth grade boy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they were they were rough, they were rowdy, and they just came in, and it was like romper room every single day. And um, I remember this one day that you know there there are moments that you just give up, and there was this this moment that I couldn't get control of them. You know, they just wanted to talk and do whatever they wanted to do, and they all started laughing. They're like, "Show him, show him, show him!" And I'm like, "Show me what." And, and just to kind of paint a picture of the class. So this kid takes his shoe off. He's like, I want to show you my toe. And I'm like, what in the world? And he takes his shoe off. He takes his sock off. And this kid's toe was on the top of his foot. It wasn't like, you know, you know, your toe like protrudes forward. His went straight up on the top of his foot. And he wasn't embarrassed about it. He just thought it was like hilarious deformity. And I mean, the kids are like rolling on the floor laughing because they've all seen it in gym and whatever, but they wanted me to get to see it. So that was just kind of, you know, a little glimpse into, and, and really and truly every day I dreaded my life going to that class because I knew like we weren't going to get anything done. So everybody had that, I think. Every, yeah, it was, it was my class. It was, it was the class, but um, yeah. And did you get know. better or not? Not that year. I didn't get better. <laughs> I got a little when bit. Did you actually, when, when did I, what year, what year did you actually start getting better? Oh, well, are we still yet to find that year? Yeah, he's still he's well, still waiting for it. You know, if you're a first or second year teacher and you're going like, yeah, me too. What year did you get better? I'm wanting to know. Don't take Three. my story. Don't take my story because it took me Three. a little bit longer. I, I do. I will say it got better every year, but mm -hmm. it wasn't until I was in about year six, seven, eight, maybe, where I was put in a position where I finally figured out how to really truly motivate kids and do classroom management and have good engagement to where like my classes run extremely smoothly and, and every kid's engaged the whole class period, you know? And when I say that, I know everyone's like, oh, that, yeah, right. What I mean is they weren't off task. Now, maybe they're sitting there, you know, not 100% here focused, but they wouldn't be off task and they wouldn't be disruptive. Like they were completely engaged and doing what was asked of them the entire class period. And it wasn't until about maybe year nine where I saw that um, happen. But the great thing is once I kind of learned, for lack of a better term, like the formula, I was able to recreate that year after year. And I've really found a system that worked for me to be able to get kids engaged and to stay on task and to create a good product. So, yeah, so it took, it took me some time, but you know, that's something I love to help people do because I did struggle with it. I actually left the teaching pr profession twice. And so I did struggle with it a lot and it was all because of bad classroom management. So that is kind of one of my like, you know, passions or whatever is to help people get better at that because, um, it can make your life miserable. So, Anyways, I don't know. That was kind of a little glimpse into. Man, it was that. good. It was yeah. Good glimpse. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I, the moment I met you, I knew you were a bad teacher, so it was right. no problem. <laughs> so I met Mosley. It was, let's see. What year my, were you when we met? Um, my sixth year of teaching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I. So right around you. the time you started getting good. Yeah. Yeah. So like my sixth and seventh year is when we taught together. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then from from then on, yeah. So, oh yeah, that's good. I guess I'll go next because I'm kind of in between. And then, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so, and I'll I'll try to weave in the story of how we uh, know each other. Oh, it's a beautiful so, story. Beautiful, beautiful story. <laughs> uh, so, the pivotal moment for me, the job that I initially had 
was way over my head, <laughs> way over my head, <laughs> way underqualified. So uh, it happened, it worked out where um, Pratt was going to be the band director that I was working with. So, uh, and it, it worked, I mean, it's, things happen for a reason. I believe that. So I was excited to be able to work with someone who had experience. Um, but like a, a kid coming fresh out of college, you know, you you have an idea. I mean, you've only experienced what student teaching, you know, right? Yeah, uh, and you know, and that's you're not running everything, and you're not having all the long days and stuff like that. So, um, the type of teacher I thought I would be was not because. So, what kind of teacher did you think you would be? I don't know. I just felt I would be. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the movie. Uh, Lean on me, Joe Clark. He just like, you know, very firm, very aggressive. Uh -huh. You know, like don't don't play games because all of them, like a lot of my teachers, they were very like aggressive teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm an passionate person, so like I, I can be that, but I'm not really like I I'm way more comfortable just being laid back and stuff. So I always thought that would would get results, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and so then I I meet this guy. And I've never met anyone like him before in my life. <laughs> now, what do you mean by that? I, I don't know. Like the way you word things, uh, just your, your your vocabulary, just how how you think about things is very different than anybody previously who I've ever worked with. Right. Well, I'm not worked with, but been around, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, he likes to try to use big words to make himself seem smarter. Mm -hmm. Right. You're right. This so, guy can be a little annoying. <laughs> so I'm very observant and I learn by watching. And so... <laughs> Um, the first couple of weeks of school, he ran all the classes. You know, he he led them, and I kind of just watched. And I'm like, he's saying things in a certain way, like you know, like I really didn't get it, you know. But the biggest thing I knew that I had to bridge the gap was my vocabulary to get what I knew in my head to to the kids. And you can't just say it like you would talk to an adult because they don't they don't speak on that level. So you have to break it down and make sure they you know it's clear. Uh, so I was just taking little notes, you know, from him and, and Pratt never told, like, he never said anything to me as far as like, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. he just did it. And I just watched <clears throat> and he even said if it was good. I know he did leave me with the, like, he, he did the same thing to me with my band that I, they did to him because I had like, I mean, this class was a special class, um, <laughs> my first, but he left me with them besides, but anyway, so that year was a pivotal moment because the direction I thought I was going to go, I didn't go because of the influence of Chris and like the school district that I was in. Uh, and there was also another pivotal moment that we talk about a lot. At the moment, I didn't really see it as a pivotal moment. I I saw it as an off offensive moment, but I guess <laughs> the older me understands, you know, uh, there was a great, well-renowned um, music educator who happened to be a clinician uh, in our school. And he watched me do like a little, uh, a lesson, I guess, or work with a group of students. And he just sat there. I I didn't really have too many encounters with him before. And so he was writing things down. I'm like, well, maybe he's, I don't know, he's gonna write something and tell me. And then he pulled me to the side and pretty much, I mean, this is like early. This might've been like band camp or something, mm -hmm. August. Or and I thought I did pretty good because, you know, I'm waving my hands and they're playing. It's like, hey, things are happening. You know, <laughs> the, the kid, I mean, they were, the, I didn't have a problem with classroom management, really. Um, I guess not like a first year teacher would have. He said they listened to me. It's just like getting them to do things at a high level, I guess. And he pretty much, he pretty much told me in the room, he was like, yeah. So it, the only thing that I see that you're doing is like they, they're listening to you, but everything every single thing else you're doing is absolutely wrong <laughs> you know and i'm like it's because i'm black you know like, you know, <laughs> you know you know i'm like yeah you know and so and so i'm the kind of person to like if someone says you can't do things i'm gonna try to prove you wrong so i'm like you know what i took his little his little notes and stuff like that and i'm like give me a chance to fix it so uh anyway throughout the year you know i got better i watched a lot of teachers um, and you know, by the end of my second year, he, you know, he came up to me and said, "Hey, you're doing really, really good things. I really, really appreciate that." Right. So you know, so I mean, 
those two moments, my first year teaching, just because my vision of myself was changed. And then that conversation, which is difficult conversations, because I think we talked about that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then him pretty much telling me that I was a, I was bad and so. Well, whatever. but you know, that's so important though, that you, first of all, have someone that can tell you the truth. Because at the end of the day, it's not personal. It's about getting the kids what they need, right? It was. And if, yeah. if you're up there and you're not getting the kids the right information or you're not delivering it in a way that they can receive it, then what good, you're not effective. So what's the point? Right. Of it? You got to affect change. Right. And you know, one thing that our superintendent always says, which I really appreciate is he says, this is not a works program for adults. Like we're not here to make adults happy. We're here to make sure the kids get what they need. And so- How did he say that? How did he say that? Well, it's not a works. Yeah, in other words, it's not like, I can't remember exactly how he says it, and that's terrible because I, I, really, I know, I know exactly, yeah. I forget his wording, it's so eloquent. But <laughs> basically, like, we're not a jobs program. Like, we're not here to make sure that, that adults are comfortable. Oh, like, I get that, it. That's not our point. And so, you know, that was that was a pivotal point because you got to, so, so I mean, like, that's kind of a challenge maybe for, for everybody listening to consider is like, do you have someone who will tell you the truth? Because if you Accountabil don't- Accountability partner. Yeah, because you know, if, like, you, if you don't, and it doesn't mean that they're mean to you, you know, but if, if you yeah. don't have someone that's going to tell you the truth, you know, like one thing I appreciate about Tyler, he tells me the truth about this podcast a lot. Like a lot of times I drag <laughs> my feet on things or I don't get things done or, or whatever. Like I'm a perfectionist, which is to a flaw. And so I'm always trying to make sure that everything's exactly right. And he's like, yeah, just do it, you know? <laughs> and so that's helpful. And so you have to have people around you that'll be truth tellers. And if you don't have those people, like it really ends up hindering your, find your, somebody. your product. Yeah. So go find yourself yeah. a truth teller and it That's needs to good. be somebody you can trust. Like you have to trust them. And so, mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that necessarily it has to be a, a, an administrator or superior, although all time, sometimes that is good because they can see it differently. Ooh. So a little That's lag good. there. Yeah. Well, okay. So Tyler, yes, you know, we've talked about, our, we've been pivoting. We pivoted from Pratt. We pivoted to me. <laughs> Now let's pivot on down to you. Mm. Tell us, tell us about some pivotal moments in your your well, career. Seeing how I'm the senior officer in the podcast, I, <laughs> I have a lot to offer here. My <laughs> my first official full year of a full time teacher was last year, mm -hmm. but uh, I had been um, because I'm a percussionist. I got a lot of teaching jobs besides just individual instruction, but got hired on as a um, clinicianing and as consultant and as a contract worker you've been uh, with us for like what three years uh no at, at the school that i'm at now i know like five okay because i i feel like you've been with us since forever so. yeah basically like i've i and bef before then um like i feel like i had a lot of like teaching experience before i got my first full-time gig because i was uh consulting and can uh um, con uh, clinicianing at multiple schools all around Houston. And, um, you know, they just want me for my percussion expertise, but I'm like sitting there and I'm like watching all the teachers like, okay. Da, da, da. And, uh, one thing I noticed was that like there, I felt like a lot of teachers didn't have any follow through. Like they were, they would say things they were say like they would give expectations and then they wouldn't follow through with them. Uh, and I don't just mean like on big things like, Oh, turn in the assignment. But I mean like on, um, smaller things that you would kind of like no one's going to use the bathroom today and then like they'd let kids use the bathroom Can I go? You know, like, yeah like th things like that and i was like you know what i'm gonna be that teacher that when i whatever i say it's gonna go and i don't care about anything my assignments i'm gonna i'm gonna uphold the late policy no teacher does that i'm gonna uphold the late policy i don't care if you turn in a, a paper like uh, four days late. That's a zero. I'm sorry. That's our late policy. And like, you can't turn in all your work. Da, 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 da. Well, it was good for about a week. <laughs> it was good. Actually, no, I'll, I'll uh, it was actually good until about the first grading period. And then like the coaches and uh, the other teachers and parents and like everyone was just breathing down my neck and like, everything else that I had to do on top, like administrative things and like, like newsletters had to go out. Like there's all these things that, that I had to do. And I was just like, screw it. They turned it in hundred. All right, we're gonna do this. Like, okay, look, they showed effort hundred, da, 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 hundred. Like, da, da, da. And, um, so that was like a, a, a much more pivotal moment because up until that moment I was working by the hour 
instead of working like salary, you know, like, like a teacher, like a full-time teacher is. So like, it was like, Oh, well, all these things need to get done. Well, I didn't get them done today. I'll just do them tomorrow because like when I clock back in, well, it doesn't work like that for a teacher. Like you just have to keep going. You just have to keep going. Um, and, uh, I will say that I think that my overall, my first year teaching probably went better than most first year teachers because, uh, I worked so closely with you two guys for so long and, uh, I had Pratt as a mentor. So there was a lot of things that, um, I was able to just kind of do because I was already kind of like working on with that stuff. So my student teaching wasn't really a semester long. It was more like a year, two years long because yeah. I was constantly working with you guys. And we had a lot of conversations too. Like after you, I remember you would call and say, Hey, this is what I did. And da, 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 and we just kind of talk about it too. So um, I think the more eager you are too, and the more open you are and coachable you are your first year, you know, I think it, it definitely helps out a lot. Yeah. And, but I will say that some of the, my most pivotal teaching moments probably came from when I was uh, like a, when I was just clinicianing or, or talking, you know, just like giving private lessons. I remember my very first school that I ever taught at, that I ever like went and clinicianed. I must've been about 20 years old. And- um, So for last year sometime. Yeah, last year sometime. And um, I'll, I'll never forget it. Like it was nothing but boys on the drum line. And there's one girl and she was, uh, or they, of course they were just like, just boys on a drum line. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, I shared probably a, a little too many stories of my high school with them. So I, I left my wallet and my keys on the drum and then I left and I came back and I came back and my wallet, and my keys were gone. And I was like, uh Oh, where'd these things go? And then, like, I'm looking all over for them. Well, apparently they decided to play baseball with my wallet and my keys with their drumsticks and my key, they broke my key ring and my keys like shattered throughout like the entire auditorium. And that was kind of a moment for me to realize that like, hmm, I'm not a student anymore. <laughs> like I, I can't be like their best bud yeah. and like share these stories with them. Like, I mean, I can share stories, but like I shouldn't share all of the stories. Uh -huh. right. And um, like, and then the next day, the next day I was like, hey, do y'all know whose wallet and keys those were? And they're like, no. And I, <laughs> like they were all just like trying to like play it off and they never owned up to it. But I thought that was a pretty um, funny thing that happened to me mm -hmm. that kind of like made me realize that I wasn't just a, um, I was like, that showed me that I was now a, a teacher more than a student mm. uh, when it came to things. Yeah. And I think for like teachers who go straight into teaching high school, that's a little bit more difficult because of the age gap there. Like, uh, I mean, uh, I, yeah. st I started out by primarily teaching sixth grade. So there was kind of a bigger gap. So, um, yeah. So, th I mean, I definitely think that can happen. Yeah. You know, but let me tell you what, I'm so glad that we made it through it. it, it if you're a first year teacher, you know, it does get better. You get more comfortable. You find yourself because I I thought, I think when I was in year three and then I had year one and two at the same school. And then my year three, I had to go to a whole different school. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of my career I've taught with Pratt. Mm -hmm. So, and you had uh, a great career. Do I? <laughs> and you've had a great career. You're right. <laughs> You're doing great things, changing a lot of lives. And like, my my first thing I had to do was not try to be like him mm -hmm. because I was just trying to take the way his verbiage and how he communicated and then put that into my personality because mm -hmm. our personalities are similar, but they're different. Right. You know, and our personality, it works because we complement each other with our likes and our differences, I think. Yeah. So it took for me to go to another school mm -hmm. and to kind of ha have to establish culture that I kind of, you know, had the, um, confidence i guess to be myself and to still take the way that i teach and how i say things you know so probably year three and then by year four you don't have to think about it and you know I'll you know you now that i think about it i there was one really pivotal moment that came in my teaching my first year last year and i think it was like right around november or december and i was tired 
I was really, really tired. I had like these huge headaches because I, was, I didn't, wasn't getting enough sleep. I was exhausted by the time I got home. Like I was just like drained mentally, emotionally, everything. And like I went to Pratt one day and I, <laughs> and he's, he's at his computer and he's like doing a little, you know, email or whatever. Right. And, not, uh, not paying attention to what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Well, and he's, right. like, and he's like, and I'm talking to him and I, I can look at him and he's, it's like, seven o'clock and he's still in high gear he's still going i'm like oh my goodness like how's he doing this i know i, I him, hate it i hate it <laughs> i ask him i say i was like pratt how do you not get tired and he like he doesn't stop typing and he just looks at me and for whatever reason at this exact moment <laughs> it's like that episode of spongebob when you like they zoom in on their faces and you can like see every pore i see these huge bags over his eyes wow and like like liver spots on his head and like he's like kind of sweaty a little bit and he's like typing he's like oh that's easy i'm always tired <laughs> he, just keeps, he just keeps typing and i'm just like well that's not the answer i wanted it's true right i've been tired since. Right. that's great right it's like I've been, I've been, I've been i almost wanted to quit teaching after that moment right. to tell you it's the like, truth i've been tired since 2001 and i'm never going back because <laughs> i sat down and i was just like oh my god that's my future right there that's how he lost his hair that's like right. that's everything yeah. like that's who i'm gonna become i know you you kind of you kind of know i guess your body just kind of gets used to working in that that mm -hmm. uh state of being not at 100 percent. you know yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think you definitely you know just grow accustomed to being tired all the time. Like, I can't think of a time I'm not tired. I'm always tired. <laughs> I don't feel tired anymore. Like, I, I told this to um, one of my coworkers today. I said, I I'm not stressed because someone said, you look, so you look so happy and less stressed. I'm like, I was never stressed. I usually don't stress about things yeah. unless, unless it's my master's degree. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But <laughs> like now it's like, this is, you know, it's banned or whatever. So I'm tired, like I'm less tired now. So that's probably why my skin yeah. is bright, brighter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know. I have this glow to me, you know, I just, yeah. I'm able to actually get seven hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I do think that there's something to be said to the first, I don't know. Do y'all remember getting like a, a really bad headaches or really big headache like your first year? No. Because I remember that, especially during my student teaching, like, just having this like mega headache and thinking I was dehydrated or whatever. And then I like, I went home and I just, I slept for 15 hours that weekend or something like that. And I came back and I told Pratt and he was like, yeah, I kind of figured that's what it was. I get those sometimes too. And I was like, oh, great. Like that's I didn't not know. Mm -mm. <laughs> But I, I can't, I mean, like after you, you know, work those long days, I can sleep for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a thankless job and it's never over. And it comes home with you. Yeah, that's you know that's a really good uh, topic we could talk about is like how to not let it go home with you because I know that there's been a few times where I've had like little spats with students or whatever, and it's ruined my whole day, my whole week, my whole year, where I'm still well, thinking that, about it. We'll we'll write that down. Put that one on the agenda. So we're gonna talk okay. about not don't let it like leave it at the school. Mm -hmm. And then how do you do that now that it's virtual? Mm -hmm. You close. You close your computer. <laughs> no, we. I mean, we definitely can talk about that. That we can put that on the agenda because being in your home, you're in the same environment. So how do you? You know, you mm -hmm. have to manage. You have to manage that. Otherwise, you'll be like Pratt, and you'll be working until four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and then, then sleep until you know, seven a.m. You know, and then during office hours, you know, you, you're not available. <laughs> 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 that's good so we'll put put that down we'll put we'll that down not how to uh create that work-life balance when you're i mean what mm -hmm. home work balance when you're at home mm -hmm. yeah so that's good stuff. that's good well any, right. other, any other experiences you want to share um i have one funny one and i will always remember this okay and i'll I'll, I'll tell you this in parting because it's funny and then I, I don't know, Pratt, maybe you can share another one later. But, and I had to laugh at myself. So this is like me being first year teacher, right? And um, it was a percussion class, Ooh. right? And I wasn't like, I didn't know how to teach a percussion class. Like I thought I did, but I knew nothing about it. Okay. Um, keyboards, because I played piano, so I mean, I understand that, but like, it's a, it's a whole different world. It's a different activity. Anyway. 
uh, that was probably one of my classroom management class, like issues just because it's a whole different world, you know, and they got to move equipment and all that stuff. So anyway, one time the kids, they were not doing the best. And I went to the board at the start, you know, when you're first year teacher, you do these, you had these tantrums. So you think that they respond, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, so, Right. I'm going to show and them. I'm going to get real I, mad. I, I'm going to show them and be teacher, you know, whatever. Yeah. Because how many office. times has that worked? Send you to the principal, you know? So anyway, I went to the board. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And I was like, roll on the board. I didn't say anything. I was like, roll on the board. And my first year teaching is, I think, the only time that I was like, you know, you get affected because you learn how to disconnect yourself from, you know, from their behaviors mm-hmm. and you don't get so personally involved, you know? So like I went to the board and I was like, uh, boom. I wrote, I'm like, if your name is on the board on a detention, then you just have a detention at the end of the day, right? <laughs> and then one of the kids who's super funny, he was like, but that doesn't say detention, that says detention. <laughs> 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 and I, I looked back at the board and sure enough, like I wrote it so fast, it was like detention, right? And I just stopped and I just looked and I don't remember, I don't remember my, my uh, response in the moment, but I remember thinking that was so funny because my moment was gone. Right. Because he messed it up because now we're, we're talking about detention instead of detention. So I had to go back and I was like, and then I erase it and I I was like, D hall. How about that? You know what that means? (laughs) D Hall, yeah. yeah so D-Hall. anyway, that was uh, it's a couple of you know one of the things that was funny that that first year since we're talking about that year. But anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, that's good stuff. So yeah, I, I think I, I feel uh, an episode also brewing that we need to we need to give those first year, second year teachers some some advice about how to do good classroom. I got management. it. I, I'm all over it. Let me know. Yeah. Let me know, man. I, I'll come on. I'll come on and I'll share it. All right. That's good stuff. We'll maybe I won't even charge you for it. Yeah, we'll have you on as a special guest. <laughs> good. I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> Except teaching. Well, we know that's Except the truth. All day. Yeah, that's that's the truth. So. so, okay. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. And uh, All right. Yeah, we hope you have a good rest of your day, week, morning, wherever you are. And Keep uh, keeping on. That's right. Yeah, keep on keeping on. Uh, spread the word of the Teach Bigger podcast. We're trying to grow this community and share it, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. And uh, tell a friend or two. Sit down, watch it, pop some or popcorn. 10. Or know? 10, 20, 30. Share with your entire school district. Put it on that mass email that no one listens to. <laughs> right. We're surely to get one viewer out of that. So. Yeah. Well, if you're like me, whenever we start driving to school again, all you do is turn on, turn it on and just let it play in your car while you're driving because there's really nothing to look at except our faces, so that's no big deal. So you can just listen. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Oh, so. yes. All right. Great. We'll see you.